Hi, it's Josh from Bright Talk. I'm here with Ian Glover, president of Crest. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me. So let's start by looking at the financial world. There's been some really big breaches recently on some of the big banks, Bank of Bangladesh for one. What do you think the banks can be doing to, to better protect themselves? So the banks are obviously a target because because that's where the assets are and that's where the resources are. So so I think the banks generally are doing a really good job about protection. If you look at the number of attacks they're actually managing and trying to mitigate, it's a huge number and they're doing a really good job. I think what you're seeing is the non-sophisticated attacks are now either going to less mature financial services. So in other words, that's why we're seeing more overseas attacks on, on some of the marginally less, less sophisticated markets. Sure. And then we're also seeing attacks in the, in the third party supply chain. So, so what they do is they identify where the problems are and, and they gradually move further and further down the stack to identify where, where the weak links are and that's where they're starting to mount the attacks. Okay, are we seeing a certain character of threat actor targeting these financial institutions? Well, I think you don't ever see one type of threat actor for financial institutions. What, what we're seeing now, I think, is a recognition in financial services that the very top end, the critical national infrastructure end, the, the very high marketplace end, then we're seeing a lot more sophisticated attacks come through. And so what we're now seeing is regulators being much more interested in terms of the types of controls those critical financial services have to have in place. And we're seeing that on a global basis. So, so within Quest, we're working with the Bank of England. In Hong Kong, we're working with the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. In Singapore, we're working with the Singaporean Monetary Authority. And there's a whole pile of other regulators trying to get together to understand what they need to do about this sort of consolidated, concerted, intelligent type attack vectors. Sure. I heard you mention critical infrastructure there. And they're obviously some of our most vulnerable assets nationally. What do you think we could be doing as, as maybe our, our government and the people who run these, these, these assets to better protect them? So critical national infrastructure is a fascinating area, I yeah. believe. If, if you look at everything from industrial control systems through to the more general administration system. So if you look at the top end of the industrial control systems area, then what we've got to do is provide greater levels of assurance. And the reason for that is we're seeing more and more interconnectivity. So it used to be that these industrial control systems were completely separate. Sure. But now what we're doing is we're providing IP links in to manage and control it and take information out. What we need to do is to identify the types of threats we're actually trying to protect against. So, so that's a really important consideration. And then from a penetration testing team, for example, what we need to do, I believe, is to have mixed teams. So if you're working in telecommunications, to come up with some really good scenarios, particularly at the CNI levels, then we need to combine people that really understand telecommunications with those that understand how to attack. And we need to do the same for other areas of industrial control systems and CNI. The government, I think, is doing a good job in terms of trying to drive this, but I think a more consolidated, more concerted view would, would actually be a really good thing. Sure. Do, you think, do you think the kind of key aspect to uh, better protection is running really strong pen tests? So, so we shouldn't really need to do penetration testing. If we design security in the first place, then we'd use penetration testing for validating what, what's actually in place to make sure it's being used appropriately. So, so penetration testing is really interesting because, because it is quite prevalent, and some of that is through poor architectural design, some of that is through poor web design, and if we improve that end, then we can actually concentrate on protecting ourselves against a more sophisticated attack, and that's really where penetration testing starts to come in. And at that level, we need to start to pull in the threat intelligence, so we're actually doing intelligence-led penetration testing based on real-life scenarios using the common uh, threat uh, actors, but also looking at some of the more advanced persistent threat. And you've got a, as the president of Crest, you've got a, a kind of broad view of the security industry. Are there any developments you're seeing over the next few years that you find quite exciting, quite positive steps? So I think if you just look around this show in particular, it's fantastic. You know, the, the diversity of different activity that's going on is just huge. But if you're looking for, for significant change, I've been doing this, this work for a very long time. Sure. We've been talking about threat for a very long time. And I think for the first time ever, we can start to use threat intelligence. And if you start building threat intelligence into your continual threat monitoring process, then there is a reason to start anticipating what's coming over the hill. So up in the past, we've been reactive. So something's been attacking us, and therefore we've got to monitor it, we've got to control it, and we've got to do something about it. Sure. If we do continual threat monitoring appropriately, then we can actually start to anticipate what's coming over the hill, and therefore we can be much more proactive in terms of our protection. 
making sure our processes are up to date, making sure that our people are made more aware at that particular point in time of that particular threat, and then providing greater levels of assurance. So I think that threat intelligence integrated into the process is really what the area I see the most. And the other is skills. You know, there's a massive interest now in terms of young people wanting to come into what I believe is a fantastic industry. And what we're now trying to do is to put career progression in place for those young people and encourage them in. So if we're going to do the, do the latter, in other words, have really good protection, we've got to do the former and actually get really good, bright young people in to help us. So if, if you were talking to, to a young uh, Ian Glover, just starting out into his new career, what would be the kind of positives you'd, you'd give him to say, come into the, in, the world of InfoSec? So, so I've been in this industry for 40 years, you, at which point you meant to say, no, you look far too young, <laughs> but, but I'll accept that. Um, and I've loved nearly every minute of it. It's yeah. just been magnificent. So the idea you can make a difference is really big. The idea that you can do really well within a big organisation or work for a boutique is fantastic. The idea that you can set your own business up and you can actually build it out of technology is just awesome. And then if you look at the continual change in terms of the threat landscape, what we have to do is continually keep ourselves up to date, which is really magnificent. So if you combine all of those things together as a career, the idea of being an accountant or being an auditor or working in cybersecurity, I know which I would choose. It's an exciting career. We're in. Pleasure. Thank you very much for coming to talk to us. Thank you. We're in for security all week, so stay on Bright Talk for more cybersecurity insights.